Hey guys, it's Henry here again, and welcome back to another episode of Apparel Academy. About a year ago on the show, we actually polled hundreds of embroiderers and asked them what they wish they knew before they got into the embroidery business. Since that segment, we've gotten a ton of comments from you guys thanking us for the valuable insight that that was able to give for your custom apparel business. So with that in mind, we decided to do this one more time and have another segment on the show of what I wish I knew. I'll be covering another three things that embroiderers wish they knew before getting started in the embroidery business so that you can be prepared before starting your next venture. All right, so before we get started, make sure to smash that like button on this video, give it a quick thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that you keep up to date as soon as a new video comes out. Also, comment in the comment section below what you wish you knew before starting in the embroidery business or the custom apparel business in general, and we can get those questions answered. All right, so jumping right into point number one, one of the top things that embroiderers wish they knew before they get started in the business is how and where to market my business. So right off the bat, you have a couple of decisions that you have to make. You have to decide whether you want to go with a platform to market your business or you want to have your own website to market your business. So if you decide to choose the platform route, the benefit of going with a platform is that you leverage the traffic that the platform is able to bring. And it, a platform basically acts as a middleman to connect people that are looking for embroidery services with vendors like yourself who can provide and fulfill those embroidery orders. Because a platform already has a given audience, you don't have to do as much marketing to bring in some traffic because just being listed on the platform is able to drive you some traffic on its own. So in the apparel customization space, there are several platforms to choose from, ones like Garmio or ones like Etsy where it kind of focuses on handmade goods as well as other customized goods or even Amazon. And as I mentioned before, the strongest pro of going with a platform like this or a marketplace is that it already has a source of traffic. And so you can leverage the traffic that the platform is able to bring and have more discovery for your store or for your listing. Some platforms even allow you to spend some money to boost your listing and get more presence and get more eyeballs onto the offerings that you have. But overall, the marketing efforts here when you're joining a platform is gonna be much less than if you were to do this on your own. Now on the flip side, the con is obviously not having that much control. Because you're joining a platform, you are adhering to the platform's rules, you're leveraging its traffic, but on the flip side, you don't get to control all the leads that are coming in, you don't get to control all the traffic that's coming in because, let's face it, you're not the main source of paying for that traffic. And because it's not your own website and you're just a listing or a storefront on another platform, you don't have that control of having any tracking or any specific functionality that you wanna change that might be customized to your needs. You have to kind of just go with what the platform has and adhere to its rules. So if you don't want to join a platform, you can also go the route of creating your own website. And there are several options to be able to do that. Different tools like Wix or Squarespace can allow you to do some DIY websites and get a site going for very little cost and very little involvement. Other ones like Shopify or BigCommerce are more e-commerce focused tools that allow you to have your own website and your own storefront to be able to put your listings and your product offerings. Then finally, if you're going kind of above and beyond, you can even create your own custom website, but obviously that will take more time and more cost, but you can build it to fit exactly your specifications. So if you do decide to go with your own website, whether it's with simple DIY tools like Wix or Squarespace or even WordPress, or if you decide to go with a more robust e-commerce solution like Shopify or BigCommerce, you will have the advantage and the pro of keeping that control and having all the leads generated on your website be within your control and your database. Now on the flip side, the con of going with your own website is there's a lot more upfront cost if it's something custom. And also, if it's not something custom and you're using a tool like Wix or Squarespace or even more robust tools like Shopify and BigCommerce, there's gonna be a lot more setup that you'll have to do on your own beyond just posting a simple listing or having a simple page as a storefront. So now that we covered where to market your business, let's talk about how you're going to market your business. So with marketing, it really boils down into two big categories, either free marketing, using free tools on social media to promote your business, 
or paid marketing using advertising. So first off, everyone should take advantage of the free tools on social media to advertise your business. Because let's face it, it's absolutely free and it doesn't take a lot of work to get those things set up. And as I mentioned before, in decorated apparel, it's very visual. So people like to see what type of work you're able to produce. So social media, especially ones that focus on photos and videos, are especially helpful to promote your business because you can easily showcase what services you offer by just showing what you can do. Actually, if you wanna check out more tips on how to promote on social media and what platforms you should use to promote your decorated apparel business, check out the link I put in the card above in another video that I talked about on this channel on how to leverage social media to promote your decorated apparel business. So now that you know that marketing pretty much breaks down into free marketing or paid advertising, you also need to couple your marketing strategy with the route that you took of where to market your business. So if you decided to go with the platform route, you probably don't have to spend that much on marketing. Your marketing can be essentially free because you're leveraging the traffic that is being generated from the platform itself. On the other hand, if you do decide to go with your own website, whether it's with Wix or whether it's with Shopify, that's going to require a lot more marketing from your end because it's a standalone website, it's not a platform, and people can't discover your website in the beginning because no one knows you. So you will have to do your own advertising and own marketing, whether that's free on social media or with paid advertising on Facebook, on Google, to drive traffic to your own website. Essentially, there's no platform traffic to leverage, so you have to start out from scratch. All right, so now that we've discussed where and how to market your embroidery business, the next natural thing that a lot of embroiderers wish they knew before they got started is how to determine your niche. All right, so why is determining your niche so important? It's important because it allows you to start small and dominate one area or one vertical and not stretch yourself too thin. Once you've determined where and how you're going to market your business, you need to determine your niche so that you can be focused and targeted in your marketing and make it more effective. So there are two general ways of determining your niche, either by item type or by vertical or industry. So let's start off by talking about determining your niche based on item types. Here is where you ask yourself the question of what type of items do you want to focus on? Do you want to focus on caps? Do you want to focus on monograms? Do you want to focus on baby clothing? Maybe that's your niche. Or more corporate, such as uniforms and promotional products. Perhaps you have a knack for patches, and that's something that you're very interested in, or that's something that you get a lot of demand for, and maybe you can start there as well. Now, the second way of honing in on a niche is based on industry or vertical. So here's where you ask yourself the question of what industry or what groups of people do you want to target for your embroidery services? Do you want to focus on things such as weddings? and events. Maybe you want to start off your niche there. Maybe you want to focus more on schools or daycare centers and kind of make a name for yourself in that vertical. Maybe you have a connection with real estate and you can niche down focusing on fulfilling the needs of real estate agents or real estate firms. Or maybe you have an in with Greek organizations and schools such as a fraternity or a sorority and you can provide those items for that type of audience. The key difference here when you're niching down based on industry or vertical is that you're targeting a group of people and therefore offering a variety of items to fulfill the needs of that group of people or that audience. This is a slightly different method than niching down based on item type because with item types, you're just focusing on specific items or groups of items that you're looking to embroider and you can offer that to anyone that wants it across different industries. So now that you know the two general ways to hone in on your niche, how do you really choose which way to go with and which niche you want to focus on to start with? So choosing which niche you want to go with really depends on your background, your experience, and what connections you have. I would definitely recommend that you choose a niche that you have experience in or you have a genuine interest in or a connection with so that you can get started much easier than if you don't. For example, do you have connections with local schools? If you do, perhaps niching based on industry or vertical is your best bet. Do you have a knack or a genuine interest with caps or patches and people love the designs you're able to produce on those type of items? Then perhaps niching based on the type of item is your best bet. 
The point is reflect on the resources and the strengths that you have and get started there. All right, the last thing that embroiders wish they knew before they get started in the embroidery business is what type of supplies I need. It's not surprising that this question is on the what I wish I knew list because I get asked that question a ton when people are looking to get into the embroidery business. Because just getting the embroidery machine is only one part of the overall process. Once you get the machine in place, you need the right supplies and tools to make sure that you can run a successful business with. Because let's face it, just the machine itself is not going to produce embroidery. You need another list of supplies to be able to produce your first project. So knowing that you'll need some extra supplies and accessories to run a successful project, what exactly do you need? So here I break down the accessories and supplies that you need into two big categories. The first category is must-haves and the second category is what I call the boosters. So the must-have supplies and accessories are those that you can't even run a business with. You can't even do a project with if you don't have them. So these are things such as needles, bobbins, supplies such as backing and stabilizer, other supplies like hoops, right? Just regular hoops for you to be able to hoop your garment or your product so that you can embroider on it. Luckily, all of these items that I just mentioned, whether it's thread, backing, bobbin, and hoops, they all come with our embroidery machine packages here at Recoma. In fact, not only do our machines come with hoops of different sizes for you to get started on, we also give you a starter kit of supplies, including thread, needles, backing, and bobbin, so that you have samples of these materials and determine which one you need to be able to order more after your samples are gone. All right, so with the must-have supplies and accessories out of the way, let's move on to the booster supplies and accessories that you can add on to run a successful embroidery business. So booster supplies and accessories really achieve one of two things. They either boost your efficiency or they boost the variety of things that you can offer to your customers. Both of these purposes, whether it's increasing your efficiency or offering more variety to your customers, can lead and will lead to better ROI and more profit for your embroidery business. So some of these supplies and accessories and add-ons in this booster category include things like the 8-in-1 fast frames. This is basically an add-on accessory that you can use to be able to embroider hard-to-hoop items like your sleeves, uh, cuffs of sleeves, your collars, or even baby onesies and pockets. Next, we have what's called the robot frame, which is essentially an embroidery clamp that you can use to embroider on shoes. This also increases your offering to your customers because if you get an order for shoes, you don't have to turn that away to someone else. Then you have the belt hoop, which is great for embroidery on belts or other belt-like items like dog collars or straps. So we do have some great videos on how to use the belt hoop to embroider things like dog collars. So if you do want to check them out, I've linked it in the card above and in the link below. And last but not least, we have the mighty hoops, which are magnetic hoops that you can purchase as an add-on to make hooping easier. Not only are these mighty hoops very useful when it comes to hooping faster and with more efficiency because they just snap together with the force of a magnet, but they're also very helpful in avoiding hoop burns or hoop marks on your more delicate fabrics. All right, guys, that's it for us for today, and I hope you found this information helpful as we gave you three additional things that embroiderers wish they knew before they got started in the business. As a reminder, make sure to smash that like button on this video and subscribe to the channel so you keep up to date with the latest videos that come out. Also, if you enjoyed content like this and want to learn more about things that embroiderers wish they knew before they jumped into the business, go and make sure to check out the other segment we did on this a year ago, and there are more tips there for you to consume. I put the the link to that video in the card above and in the description below. All right, leave a comment in the comment section below if you found this helpful or give us other suggestions of what videos you would like to see and you might be responsible for the next video. Finally, don't forget to join our free Facebook group Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery where there's now close to 19,000 embroiderers and custom apparel decorators in there sharing their tips, their knowledge, and their experience in this industry. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at RecomaHQ where we post there daily so you can be a part of the conversation there and keep up to date with the latest trends happening in the world of decorated apparel. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys next time.